Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, earlier this week, the BBC revealed details of John Whittingdale's private life and a short relationship the culture secretary, a single man, had with a woman he subsequently discovered was a dominatrix sex worker. So he ended the relationship. Much ado about nothing, you might think. But if you wanted to know the much juicier details about a married celebrity couple who made a big thing about being one big happy family, then took out a super injunction to suppress details of three-in-a-bed romps with a spot of olive oil wrestling on the side, well, you'd have to do something drastic, like move to Scotland or the <laughs> States or even go online to read about it. I'm told Michael's now trying to work out how to include olive oil in one of his train documentaries. <laughs> I think he will, but I digress. After phone hacking and the Leveson inquiry, are we any clearer when publishing is in the public interest and when it's simply unnecessary intrusion? Here's tabloid poster boy Neil Wallace, formerly of The People, The Sun, The News of the World, with his take of the week. <laughs> a week of conspiracy, smear, counter smears, invasions of privacy. So I've come for a bacon sarnie and a cuppa to calm down. But you know what? It's not often I can say this. It's not been the gutter press that has been responsible for trampling their way through the private lives of a cabinet minister. It's the BBC. Good old auntie. Thank you. I worked in tabloids for years. I still know a good story. You know what? Single man has sex with a single woman doesn't quite cut it. It's true, 20 years ago, we'd have run a version of that story. But you wanted Leveson, and you got it. And now, you have to live with the consequences. But what's happened this week has been like Alice through the looking glass. The BBC, for decades, has set itself up as the vanguard of privacy, railing against these nasty, intrusive tabloids. And not anymore. One bacon sandwich. Thanks. But now, this week, you've had the BBC teaming up with Hacked Off and some nutjob conspiracy theorist website to attack the press for not printing a non-story about someone most people have never even heard of. You couldn't make it up. Now, of course, the issue of privacy and public interest is a complex one. And, of course, all media are beholden at all times to report the news. But the suggestion that there is a parallel between this story and the privacy superinjunction is ridiculous. It's simply crazy that in the post Leveson world it should be acceptable that a famous couple could use their glamorous lifestyle and their children as a lucrative marketing tool and then use their ridiculous wealth to hire lawyers to persuade judges to gag the rest of us from knowing the truth about them. It's madness. The BBC and their mates are hacked off so they wanted to stop the press poking around in other people's lives. They got what they wanted. They're still not happy. Funny that. And from the Queen's Head Cafe in Vauxhall to thumbing through our own little greasy spoon menu here on this week, Neil Wallace joins us now. Welcome to the programme. Now, the minister and the dominatrix, you'd have published that story in a flash. 20 years ago, would you? Even 10? I'm not even sure 10. The mood started to change, uh, even before Leveson, <clears throat> but certainly post Leveson, not a chance in hell. Is it right the mood has changed? Yes, it has, yeah. Why do you think the newspapers who had the story didn't publish it? I think for the most... two reasons. First reason, 
at the time in particular. And incidentally, what's important to say is they didn't all have this story together. No, I they had I'm it not sequentially. But why you know, didn't they publish it? Because they thought, who knows this guy? And they thought, essentially, because it was long before he became a minister. Mm, over a year. A single man, date, single woman, uh, that's it, Ed. What's the story there? Now, he, you, it's absolutely true, he was the head of a um, select committee, mm. a significant select committee, but at the bottom line, media are in the business of telling people things that are interesting about people are interested in. Mm. If you get put, even today, I suspect, you put John Whittingdale's picture in front of 100 people, 99.9 .9 of them, even now wouldn't know who he was. Okay, but um, now you managed in, you, to bash the BBC in kind of almost every second sentence, which is fair, fair enough. But surely was there not some public interest in the fact that the newspapers, which fall under this minister's remit, had an embarrassing story about him? But it wasn't embarrassing because they weren't interested but in But he the said story. it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing personally to him. Of course. He, f he felt embarrassed. Hmm. But the idea that newspapers looked at a situation and decided it wasn't interesting is not a holdover him. And don't forget, you know, the idea that this is some vast conspiracy, which was, don't forget... No, no, I've not used a, the word conspiracy. No, no, I'm, 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 just, not I, I'm simply that suggesting that maybe it was in the public interest that people knew that this minister, who's the newspapers fallen his remit, that they had a story that he would have preferred, as we all would have preferred, that it didn't come out if it had been about us. No, I, I understand that. But the way this story was presented by the BBC in the first place, don't forget, was this was a great big conspiracy by the national newspapers mm. together collectively not to publish this story uh, so they could have a hold over uh, mm. the minister. There is not, apart from Hacked Off and apart from BBC Newsnight, there's not a shred of evidence there's any truth okay. in it. Well, the newspapers right or wrong is to uh, pub uh, not to publish this story. I think they were right not to publish it. Um, I mean, John Whittingdale is a single man and what he does in his private life is his own business. I mean, my concern is more why the Prime Minister and John Whittingdale haven't fulfilled their commitments to the victims of phone hacking, the public, and indeed uh, fulfilled the will well, of the House I'll, of Commons I'll come on, to, on, to, on to, the to, measures there. I'm but I think it's right. You know, the, the world has moved on from then. Well, the newspapers right or wrong not to publish? Uh, I want to answer it this way. I, I think the story is not particularly damaging to John Whittingdale, and therefore you can't really regard it as a sword of Damocles. And those two things having been said, I think it is unlucky for John Whittingdale that the story was not published. Because, because since the story was not published, it puts him in the position now of being suspected of having a conflict of interest. As I say, I think the story wasn't actually damaging, and therefore, you know, it, it, that isn't particularly logical, but I think it puts him in that unfortunate position. And I do think, by the way, I don't often defend the BBC, but I think the BBC is perfectly right to say that it raises that question. So you think the BBC was right to broadcast the story it did, related yes, to not, this? Yes, not, uh, not because it wished to invade John Whittingdale's privacy, but because it wished to raise the question of whether the minister had a conflict of interest. But this is an issue of scale, right? This wasn't the story that simply appeared on BBC Newsnight, right? This was a huge story on the Today programme, which we all know sets the agenda the you next day. You mean the follow-up to the Newsnight story? Yes. The, it was the lead on the BBC News website. I got asked onto all, just about every single major BBC uh, news outlet, whether it was the Today programme, Five Live, BBC News, okay. uh, even Victoria okay. Derbyshire. There was... They went mad for it. May I just make one other point? Uh, you, you were saying before that, you know, there was no point printing anything about John Whittingdale. No one had heard of him. There was a man called Lord Sewell, of whom literally nobody had heard whatsoever, who was absolutely pushed all over the tabloid newspapers. He was a member of the House of Lords, obviously. That's clear by his title. Uh, and you could say he was a married man, as though that made all the difference in the world. I'm not sure that it does. But I simply do not believe Neil's proposition. I simply do not believe Neil's proposition that the tabloids have moved on, that they've decided that now, you know, if something's just a private matter for people's private lives, that the tabloids aren't going to... No, 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 hold on. I want to ask for a bring the, 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 in here. Sorry. Do you think the BBC was right to do this story? Well, you know, I understand what Michael's saying there about raising the question 
of whether the newspapers held this story back either because they thought it wasn't a story or because they knew he was favourable to them because he's always been on the record as being anti-Leveson. Mm. And the truth is we're never going to know the answer to that. But the real issue, if I can come back to it, is there have been commitments from the Prime Minister about implementing Leveson and the will of the House of Commons has been that then we have passed legislation to say there should be strong incentives for newspapers to sign up to an independent Leveson compliant body and those that don't could face But that's face clearly not going to happen damages. now. I mean, the government's if, just walking away from that. But then we, and I would suggest it's walking away from but it that is a, because it doesn't want to do it, not because of any story that, that they might the have had of, on John that Willingdon. That has been the will Absolutely. of the House. And I, if they want to change, change, I, I change their position... But do you also accept that the government do just doesn't want to, for, for whatever reason, and it's clearly well, not I've something no as trivial as this, they're not going to do it. But I would like to see the Prime Minister explain to the victims of phone hacking and to the public and to come to the House of Commons and explain if, why he's not doing what he said he'd do. If it's not in the public interest to publish a story about the minister and the dominatrix, which is a tabloid headline, why are the tabloids gagging to publish the story about the celebrity couple? Because the two, you know, you're talking about bananas and cucumbers here when you look at these stories. What you have on the celebrity threesome story is you have a world-famous couple who have used their family status, who have paraded their children, have used it as a marketing ploy, then using their vast wealth to uh, basically hire expensive lawyers to try sure. to gag the rest of the world. But I would suggest to you that it. that's not the tabloids pursuing a public interest. It's because you know that this celebrity couple would sell a lot more papers than John Whittingdale. That's the real reason you, the, you'd want to publish it. There is an element of that, of course. A big they element. are a big story. But the issue, though, of the idea of how you gag a story like that, that I would argue is completely in the public interest, Oh, that's... And, and but why, you... is there, why is there private life in the Hypocrisy. public interest? Hypocrisy. You can... he, he's saying Hypocrisy. they're putting a different picture ahead of what well, who the reality is. Well, say that what a, a couple can do, whether they have children or not? Well, if you, if you had been a, a famous MP campaigning against abortion, mm -hmm. but that you had had last year an abortion, would that not be in the public interest to publish? Yes, it would, but as but far as I know from what saying you're saying on my story, that the same they thing. have, uh, however it's they may behave in their private life, they may well have this, their Michael? children too. What well, business I, is that of anybody? I don't know who the separate couple is, and I therefore can't... I, I cannot you must have the only one who does. All right. But that, that, <laughs> but that, this that, that is doesn't know. That is the position I'm in, and I don't know to what extent they trade on their children. But I do understand that people... I do understand in the case of a legislator, who is advocating a public policy and is doing something different that, that is in the public interest. I don't exactly. understand why, exactly. just because these people are famous, their private lives are up for grabs. I don't. Exactly. It's about hypocrisy. It's about the fact that but lots, people, people, but what's lots of people are hypocritical. It? Why is that in the public what, interest? What's hypocritical about what they're doing? Because <laughs> when they had their children, right, it was almost like the birth of a royal prince. It was announced... What's that got to do with what they, they do when behind closed doors in their bedroom? I'm Nothing. Af I'm afraid this is bananas and cucumbers. You have one view of life and we have a different one. Can I, can I ask... We'll, we'll let that hang in there. <laughs> I'm told there may be developments in court scary. tomorrow about this, but oh. we'll see. Is Labour right to call for John Whittingdale now to be removed from any involvement in newspaper regulation? Because, I mean, now the story is out. Mm. The newspapers could hardly influence them with this anymore. I think the, the focus opposite, should really. be more on asking him to fulfil the, the will of the House in doing what he said he would do, which is to bring forward this strong incentive for newspapers to comply with Leveson or face exemplary but damages. But my understanding, I, I mean, what you're saying, the strong incentive is that if they don't sign up under the Leveson plan, even if they won a court case, they'd have to pay everybody's libel costs. It's pretty clear that Mr Whittingdale doesn't think that's right anymore. Well, come back to the House and explain to MPs yes, who then, overwhelmingly voted yeah, for it. There's the, 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 the a gap between yeah. the government's position and what the government's right. actually doing. Yes. By the way, may I just say, one Briefly. of the accusations made against the BBC is that the BBC has done this against John Whittingdale because they're in a tussle with him over the licence fee. And this seemed to me absolutely preposterous. If you're in a tussle over the licence fee or the Royal Charter or whatever, is the thing that you want to do as the BBC to attack the man that you're you negotiating with? You know what you with? want to do? Right. You want to get him recused from giving any sort, having any sort of influence on that decision. Right. And that was what was behind it. My understanding is the licence fee was settled by the Chancellor anyway a long <laughs> while ago, so why bother? Um, thank you very much, Neil Wallace. You're welcome.
Getting away with it all